welcome guys. Um, Wes and Will, you guys are the um, construction, tiny house, big people type of deal. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys are building a timber and a mason, masonry, brick? Yep. Mm -hmm. House? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, this first one's going to be post and beam, cool. and then we'll be doing the mass wall uh, masonry. And then after that, we'll be doing heavy timber frame as well. Okay. So is this, I know in your talk you talked about stick versus timber. Is this, this timber? Mm, this is kind of a cross between stick and heavy timber. So okay. it's post and beam. Um, and so in the States, this is like how you would build more of like a pole barn structure. Um, so it's slightly better than stick because you get some bigger members in there and it'll last a little bit longer. Cool. And the benefit of timber um, ecologically is not like initially there, right? But over time it lasts longer, so you're gonna have less waste. Right, uh, you get basically more bang for your buck and more bang for the tree's life. And, um, oh, do you have any? <laughs> How do you explain that? Well, yeah. there's less competing materials. Um, you're not cutting trees down as often. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like to replace a stick frame house, you need to re replace it every, usually they replace the whole house every 50, 60 years, versus the timber frame can last at least 200 years, usually longer. Why is that just bigger materials? Um, also, less metal fasteners uh, and more adaptability in terms of how the structures can be rearranged and things, because you have just your posts and your, uh, your framing members, so you have like kind of this open floor plan to work with, and so you can rearrange partitions and stuff. Cool. Um, but with the stick frame, it's it's more limiting, and so people just scrap the whole thing. Yeah, and that's the same with mass wall masonry, right? You can kind of disassemble yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can, um, but it's still kind of the open floor plan okay. uh, way to go, and so you can partition it any way you want inside. Um, and if you do it right, you can take the bricks back apart and reuse them for another structure. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, how'd you guys get into this? Did you go to school for engineering? Uh, I have a degree in architecture. Awesome. Um, and then I went and studied under a master builder for two years. Um, and he was doing heavy timber frame and the mass wall masonry. Uh, he started a movement called Hope for Architecture, of which I'm the fourth guild member, um, fourth and latest. And yeah, so I'm here doing my journeyman phase. And awesome. Starting this new town in Colorado. Sweet. Is this like a long term thing? Uh, yeah. 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 So you want to build these all over Colorado? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just starting with the uh, carriage houses on the backs of these lots. So this is an alley, uh, the first alley, the first actual street that's on the master plan. Um, and so over here on that, there's a road down there. The larger house will actually face out that way, okay. towards that road. Um, so we're starting with all of these back houses, and we'll rent them out and get people inside instead of outside. There's a whole like city plan for Kaliyala? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, there's a master plan. I that's, can get you an image of that. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That was done by, the latest one was by Ricardo Rosamena. He's a Panamanian who went to Notre Dame University in the States. And cool. He works down here. Yeah, city planning is fascinating. Yeah. It's a lot that goes into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you, uh, Will? How did um, you get into it? I have a year under my belt from the Savannah College of Art and Design, mm -hmm. studying something that is completely unrelated to what I'm currently doing. And... Ah, you say that, but the guy <laughs> I learned... Uh, the, the guy who started Hope for Architecture got his degree in oil painting. Okay. And he builds houses. So. Mm -hmm. Is that what you did? Oil painting? Um, illustration. At the time I was mostly focused on watercolor and cool. slowly working my way toward colored pencil. Wow. And I haven't dropped it yet, but I uh, quit my job at Michael's to actually learn timber framing and um, heavy masonry in Oklahoma where I met Wes on a build site. So Nice. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it definitely crosses over the creativity and Structure. Yeah, it's an eye for proportions, and then it's just materials and execution after that. Yeah, like mm -hmm. those um, houses you were building, 
Is that what, this is Hope for Architecture? Right? Yep, that's Clay Chapman. Yeah, those were insane. Yeah, they're that's great. Definitely a lot of creativity that goes into it. Oh yeah, they can definitely take on a, a lot of sculptural qualities. Yeah. So, do you think anything at SCAD compares, compares or? or like added? Um, I have a lot. I understand things visually, mm -hmm. and so definitely learning how to think in, in more than just two dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> that helped a lot. Um, spatial recognition, and I don't really understand something completely until I draw it. And there have actually been just designs that I've copied from Wes that I haven't really gotten or even wanted to ask questions about until after I'd done a drawing of it, so... Um, it's completely factored into the way that I understand the spaces that I interact with. That's but. really cool. I guess everyone kind of understands everything differently. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting take on it, though. <laughs> um, what brought you guys to Kaliyala? I know you work together outside. Right, um, so five, maybe six years ago now, uh, Clay Chapman, who was the master builder that I studied under, came down to consult with Jimmy on some of the construction and stuff. Um, and also just toured around Panama, like trying to look at where to get brick and that kind of thing. Um, and so they had that connection. And while Clay was here, there was a student here named Austin Tunnell um, in the business program. And then he went to the Peace Corps for two years, came back and taught the business program at Kaliala. And when he left, he told Jimmy he wanted to get into building. And Jimmy told him, if you're going to do that, there's only one place you can go. And he called Clay Chapman. And so he went and tried out for the apprenticeship. There's a trial week. Um, and he got it. So he was Clay's second apprentice, and I was the third. Um, so I got there four months after Austin. And like pretty much the first day I was there, Austin saw me about Jimmy Stice and Panama. And so I start talking to him a couple months after I start at HFA. And uh, I've been talking to him for the last two and a half years now. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah connections I guess yeah. mm -hmm. it's a big thing with Kaliala I've noticed like um, Jesse just like met a guy on a site on like a, a shoot and like oh Jimmy Stice come <laughs> on down yeah how did you end up here well um, when I was in Oklahoma it was Kaliala was kind of used as a, a polarizing advocacy for a lot of the other like heavy conventional thing so anytime there was like a big debate going on Austin would kind of dig in on the other side and, and stand up for the little guys trying to build it here and so it was really just I don't know like kind of something that they were throwing around and then um Jimmy's sister visited a build site when we were in Georgia together working on the chapel so a chapel not the chapel but <laughs> um and from that point on I guess the name started becoming a little bit more frequent um, until Wes and I started talking about it together. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. And then you both came at the same time. Yeah. yeah, we both came down last October for a 10-day visit. That's when we poured the foundation for this house and uh, met everybody that was here at the time. And so these projects weren't going on at all until you guys showed up? Uh, well, David's house was here and there was some other abandoned student projects that didn't get done um, but yeah this is going to be the first planned building for the master plan mm -hmm. um, as part of the permanent town so like town square is always meant to be uh, temporary right now that's the future site of a, a hostel that'll be the same kind of so we're testing it it's like a how we want to do the design for the, the hostel that'll be downtown mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's where it will be. But this is like the first one that's meant to be here for more than five years. Cool. That's awesome. So the entrance is still going to be by the future hostel. Yep. And then roads will branch off to the right. There'll town. be a ring road around the property. Um, well, the, the lower part of the property, the upper part still all in conservation in nature and all that. Um, every acre, for every acre we're developing, there's like four or five acres in conservation. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, I'll have to get the, the master plan to you. Yeah, I'll superimpose that over the video. That'd yeah. be really cool to have like that reference. And yeah, I can I can point are. out what lot we're on and everything too. Yeah, uh, is there like a lot number? Not yet. No. Cool. That's awesome. This whole thing's exciting because like 
this is the start of yeah the whole thing yeah it's gonna be good so we're gonna build about 10 or 12 of these on this alley first to get started and mm -hmm. then we'll get to the bigger houses and go from there Dang. so are these gonna be once the bigger like really permanent houses are gonna be built are these gonna be just smaller options for houses or repurposed? Uh, They'll stay. Um, they're what's called an ADU, which is an additional dwelling unit. Okay. Um, and they used to be really popular everywhere. Um, some some neighborhoods have like outlawed them because they're afraid of the property values going down, depending on who would rent want to rent it. They're also called like granny flats or carriage houses. Um, but yeah, they'll be. It's, it'll be up to the property owner if they want to rent it out. If they want just like their teenager can stay there, like yeah. you know, like or if they have like guests. It can be a guest house, um, or they can rent it out to somebody who works at the institute, say, or something like that, or anybody who wants to come. That's awesome. And are you guys going to like implement these building practices into the bigger houses? Uh, the bigger houses will definitely be the heavy masonry um, and heavy timber frame. Okay. Um, we're going to phase this pole, pole, and pole barn style out pretty soon. Okay. Um, this is just kind of some wood stock that was on hand that we need to use up and is the design that is most uh, compatible with the dimensions of wood we had. So. Yeah, might as well use it. Yep. Um, all this wood was found in a river, is that true? Uh, in a reservoir. Okay. It was under, it was a, uh, what lake is it? Alright. Alright, well anyway, they, they flooded this area, like, massive lake uh, for hydroelectric like 80 years ago um, so this wood's been underwater and so it was harvested this wood uh, was harvested by divers with like chainsaws underwater it's crazy they have like a big machine now that reaches down and grabs it but at the time it was divers and it's murky insane. water and chainsaws it's crazy um, there's some videos of that on the that show that must not be named <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> um does that like help treat it at all um if it was salt water, it would, but okay. fresh water, not so much. It just kind of petrifies. Yeah. Um, it's kind of in stasis. It's neither good nor bad. Yeah, cool. So what would salt water do? Uh, the salt would kind of get imbued into the wood, and it's a preservative. You've heard of like salting meat and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's the same principle with wood. Cool. That's pretty crazy. So in terms of like sustainability, how do these materials add up to like the Home Depot wood in the States? Well, I mean that usually that's like fast growth pine or fir. Um, if you dig through the stacks, you can find some of the slower growing stuff and that'll have like the tighter rink growth rings. Okay. Um, and that's usually a lot stronger than the, the wider growth rings. Um, so we always go for that when we're building with that in the States. But this is really strong wood. Um, we plan for these houses, even these ones that are not heavy timber frame to last a long time. Um, and then once, if they are retired, they'll be either turned into biochar or we'll salvage, salvage what wood we can for other projects. And you know, it'll be like, in the States right now, it's really popular to reuse barn wood yeah. for furniture and stuff. So I'm sure something like that will be upcycled in the future. Something, yeah, my stepdad just built a house and did barn wood trim in the kitchen. Mm ridiculous how much that stuff costs yep it's crazy yeah so anytime yeah you can keep from uh completely burning the wood or letting it rot it's holding sequestering carbon okay and so that's part of the key and like so as many and as many trees as you can not cut down too yeah so it's a duality of sustainability yep nice it's really cool um oh one thing i wanted to talk about was lime are you using that at all in like the masonry houses uh definitely in the masonry uh we would we would be using it for a lime wash on these houses, but there's been some permitting issues in Panama. Okay. We can't get the what we need, so we'll get that sorted out in the near future, hopefully, and then we'll start lime washing, which lime wash is great. It's a preservative. It's a, It keeps insects away, and it's, what's the, anti, it's an antiseptic or antibacterial. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of sanitizes the space and, and it pulls carbon dioxide out of the air. Um, not as much as it takes to make the product. Okay. Like, 
but you pretty much break even on it versus okay. like some other paints and things that are made you know they just make carbon yeah so that's cool dang um hmm. and it'll be used in our mortar too for the brick and that's part of the being able to salvage the brick later is having a lime based mortar instead of a portland cement based mortar um it's not as uh clingy yeah it doesn't stick to the brick so much so you can actually separate it when it comes time to not that it's not strong yeah it's still it's sturdy just, but yeah it's just not it's not any stronger than it needs to be is there like a solution where you can just like forcibly break them apart you usually just you break so many bricks when you're doing that but cool nice all right well i think that covers a lot of it okay thank you guys well, thank you yeah that was an awesome talk